Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the properties of half-life, which is found in the atomic structure topic of GCSE Combined Science Physics. So in today's lesson we're going to look at what the properties of half-life are and understand the importance of the half-life of a radioactive substance. So if we have been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand and define what half-life is, understand how half-life can be worked out and determine the dangers of the radioactive substance due to their half-life. Half life, which is found in the following part of the GCSE Combined Science Specification 6.4.2.3 Half-Lives and the Random Nature of Radioactive Decay. Now the half-life of a radioisotope is a fixed value due to the random and spontaneous nature of the decay. Now each radioisotope has a measurable half-life made from experimentation. So as a result, half-life is fixed as each unstable nucleus has the same unchanging chance of decaying and becoming stable. Now the half-lives for different isotopes can vary between years, months, days and minutes depending on that radioisotope. Now like we mentioned before, the half-life of a radioisotope can never be varied, you can't change it. We can only account for it, never alter it. So it's important that the half-life of a radioisotope is always constant. Now in measurements there's a slight variation half-life because of the random nature of radioactive decay, however the half-life a radioactive isotope cannot be affected by any man-made factor such as temperature, pressure or such the like. Now it's important to note that half-life is not the time for the isotope to lose all its activity, rather than the time for it to half its activity. Now isotopes will always stay radioactive for a longer time than their half-lives and the different half-lives of isotopes make them suitable for different roles in the world and in addition to that the type of radiation emitted by the nuclei will also determine their function in the world. So it's important to note that for example you may use a particular um radioisotope in cancer therapy or brain scans because the radiation it emits and the half-life of the radioisotope. Whilst you might use a different radioisotope for a biochemical tracer or for a nuclear reactor due to the radiation they give off and the half-life of that isotope. Now there are many isotopes which have very long half-lives. So famous examples include uranium-235 which is found in nuclear power stations so there's a half-life of 703 times 10 to the 6 years and plutonium which which also has a heart is also found in nuclear warheads which has a half-life of 80 times 10 to the 6 years. Now it's important to note why a radioisotope with a long half-life is dangerous. Well a long half-life indicates that the isotope will be radioactive and emit a lot of radiation for a long period of time. So this means the radioactive isotopes can cause ionization over a long period of time. Now again if a radioactive isotope has a long half-life then its level of danger will remain constant constant for a long time because it's important to note that its activity will remain constant for a long period of time. So a long half-life indicates the isotope will be radioactive and emit a lot of radiation for a long period of time. So this means the radioactive emissions could cause ionization over a long period of time. So this means the risk associated with long half-life isotopes do not decrease by much in a human lifetime. Now this therefore means that the activity and the risk of a radioactive isotope stay relatively constant over a long period of time if they have a long half-life. Now this therefore can be dangerous because nearby areas are exposed to radiation for many many years. Now there are also many isotopes with short half-lives. Famous examples include isotope, it's the isotope of iodine 132 which has a half-life of 13 hours and is used in medical traces. Now why would radioactive isotopes with a short half-life be dangerous? Well, a short half-life indicates that whilst the isotope will not be radioactive for a long period of time, that for a short period of time, the intensity of radioactive emissions will be very high. This means that for the time they are emitted, the radioactive emissions have a higher chance of causing ionization because there are a lot of them when they are being emitted at first. So a radioactive isotope with a short half-life means that the level of danger it presents to a human dramatically drops over the lifetime of a human. So therefore, it means that at the 
start of the radioactive process, the intensity of radioactive emissions will be very high. But it means that for the ta so for the time they are emitted, the radioactive emissions have a higher chance of causing ionization. So this means the risk of a short half-life isotope will decrease by a large amount over a human's lifetime. So it will emit a high amount of radiation at the start of the process, but then quickly become safe. So it's important to note that different radioactive isotopes have different half-lives. A long half-life means the isotope is radioactive for a long period of time, so the risk does not decrease much during a human lifetime, so therefore there's a constant level of risk and activity. So this is very, very dangerous. Now this occurs because most of those radioactive nuclei do not decay for a very long period of time because it has a long half-life. Now a short half-life means the isotope has a high initial intensity and activity of radioactive emission, which is very dangerous. But on the other side, the activity and risk decreased greatly in a human's lifetime. Now this occurs as the radioactive nuclei are very unstable and rapidly decay over time. So it's important that you should be able to understand the consequence of a long half-life for a radioactive isotope and how that risk and danger changes or does not change over a human's lifetime. And for a short half-life isotope, what that impacts on the properties of that radioactive isotope and how the activity and risk will change or will not change or over a human's lifetime. So let's just clarify a few things. Radioactive decay is random and the half-life of a radioactive isotope is the time it takes for the number of nuclei of the isotope in a sample to half or the time it takes for the count rate or activity from a sample containing the isotope to fall to half its initial level. Now you should be able to explain the concept of half-life and how it's related to the na random nature of radioactive decay and determine the half-life of a radioactive isotope from given information. So if we been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to understand and define what half-life is, work out the half-life of a radioactive substance and finally determine the dangers of radioactive substances due to their half-life. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the properties of half-life, which is the topic which is found the topic of atomic structure in GCSE combined science. Thank you very much for watching and have, as always, a lovely day.